At the same time, and this may be directly related, China has been waging an unremitting propaganda war on the subject. Chinese officials have tried to squelch all conversations about who might be responsible for this pandemic by inflaming the political sensitivities and race guilt of American elites. Watch this clip from early last month as the spokesman for the Chinese foreign ministry tries to dictate how American press outlets describe the virus. Certain media say this coronavirus is a China virus. This is extremely irresponsible, and we firmly oppose that. Among the many ironies in what you just heard, even now, even today, the disease is widely referred to in China as the Wuhan virus. Our news outlets, meanwhile, almost always call it COVID-19. That term does not translate to Chinese. COVID-19 is the name devised by the World Health Organization back in January under influence from Chinese leaders who were anxious to deflect responsibility for it. Once they succeeded in removing any hint of origin from the name of the virus, the Chinese government launched a campaign to tar anyone who mentioned Wuhan as a dangerous racist. Quote, racism is not the right tool to cover your own incompetence, lectured Chinese state media when President Trump referred to the Wuhan virus. American media parroted that line almost precisely, as no doubt the Chinese expected they would. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China. That's why. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? Hilarious. It would be amusing to ask HR departments and network television why they exclusively hire morons with no self-awareness. Maybe they're cheaper. For whatever reason, tying this pandemic to China is not racist. It is true. It came from China. And as we're now learning, it could only have come from China in the way that it did. Over the weekend, the Daily Telegraph, an Australian newspaper, ran an amazing story. It consisted of excerpts from a new 15-page intelligence assessment on China's role in the disaster. This assessment was written by officials from the so-called Five Eyes, the United States, Britain, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Their combined intelligence it was a multinational effort. In effect, this new report confirms much of what we've suspected. No, the virus likely did not come from mammals that for some reason were being sold in a seafood market in Wuhan. Not from bats, not from pangolins, whatever those are. No, instead, it much more likely came from a research lab. Now, initially, Chinese sources, you may remember this, claimed the virus had jumped from an obscure scaly animal called a pangolin, which was sold in the Wuhan wet market. But that explanation didn't make any sense. Wet markets are seafood markets. Pangolins are mammals. And then the Chinese government began emitting smoke screens in the media. They used Western race guilt as a defensive weapon against the West. While China imposed tough internal travel restrictions, for example, it attacked Western governments for any restrictions they thought about placing on China as racist. Result? Many thousands of people left Wuhan and came to Western countries, where they started outbreaks in dozens of cities. New York. Seattle, Milan. At the same time, Chinese diplomats began telling the world that the virus actually had come from America, maybe from the U.S. military, maybe from a lab. They denounced any claims to the contrary as, give you three guesses, racist. And it worked. Of course it worked. That's why they did it. For the Chinese government, which thinks long term, the whole thing has been a blessing. In fact, they believe it's the beginning of a new Chinese century.